Today in the Zone, we'll explore some great activities you can enjoy that will help you have a fabulous summer. Whether you're inside lounging around or outdoors soaking up the sun, there's plenty to do. So come on, let's get started. It's Friday, the Friday Zone. That's my way to carry on. Well, what do you got at the end of the week? It's a big, big world. Let's take a peek. Now we're in the Friday Zone. Welcome into the Friday Zone. I'm Echo, your host, and today we're not only going to help you get your weekend off to a great start, but we're also going to give you some cool tips for a summer of fun. Here assisting me are Ethan and Jeanette. You guys ready to begin? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Well, first up, we're going to explore a way to travel on great adventures this summer, even if you never walk out the front door. To help us do that is a special guest today in the zone. Hey, come on in. Thanks. Let's all have a seat. What do you say? This is Patty Callison, who is the manager of children's services at the Monroe County Public Library, specializing in children's books. So Patty, I know a lot of kids are like, hey, we're out of school, we don't want to do schoolwork, but why is it important to keep reading during the summer? Well, there are lots of reasons to keep reading uh, during the summer. I mean, if you want to get into what research shows, that kids who read during the summer continue to read well and even better when they go back to school in the fall. But of course, to me, the main reason to keep reading is to have a great time. Exactly, it's fun. It's fun, it's and fun. it's not schoolwork this time. You get to read whatever you want, when you want, and uh, you know that's that's the pleasure really of of reading. Yes, not having to read the assigned book. That's right, read or answer you questions. <laughs> Jeanette, did you have a question? Yes. So, what are some ways that we can make reading fun over the summer? Well, if you go to your library, which of course I would mention, if you go to your <laughs> library, just about every library that you go to is going to have some kind of summer reading program. And with a summer reading program, that just makes it sort of a game. And lots of times they'll also have book lists, they can recommend good things for you to read, uh, things that they think you would enjoy. And, uh, and along the way, you can probably win some prizes mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, just have a good time doing it. And that, that kind of fills up your summer. It also gives you a way to visit the library maybe once a week or once every couple of weeks. So good excuse to get your folks to take <laughs> you to the library. Yes. And if you have a bookshelf at home with books that you've been meaning to read or that you read and love, this will give you a chance to, to read those books you know, that you've been waiting to read. Good point. I've got lots of those on my book So do I. How do we start a book club? Oh. Now, a book club. Good question. You want to do your own book club and not do the library's book club. That's well, kind of cool. Well, or do them both. Yeah, exactly. Or do them both. A book club is, um, actually, it's easy to start, but you've got to put some work into it. The best thing for kids to do to start their own book club is, of course, to find some of your friends, some of your buddies, who are interested in reading the same kinds of books that you that you want to read. And uh, then you have that friend, bring a friend, and if you can get about eight to 12 people together to read books together and then to talk about them, then you've got a pretty good chance of keeping a book club going. Then if somebody can't come to one, let's say you've got 12 people, if somebody can't come to one of the meetings, you don't end up having a group of two. So that's that's one way to start your own book club. You know, lots of rules to be laid down. You can go to the internet, you can come to the library, and we've got ideas for kids mm -hmm. starting their own book clubs. Great idea. Can you recommend a few new books that are out or coming out real soon? Well, I just happen to have... Hmm, how convenient. I just happen to have some covers of books cool. that have come out. These are what we would call hot books. And the reason that I just have the covers is because all of the copies are checked out. And so we have, you know, we'll have five to six copies of these. And just the fact that these are all checked out right now at our library 
means that there's a lot of demand on them. Mm -hmm. And so some of the ones that I brought with me, this one is a very exciting one. And I'll put that down here and see if it'll stay on the easel. This is Peter and the Star Catchers. And it is a prequel, that is a story that comes before Peter Pan. Oh. How did he first meet up with Captain Hook? How did he happen to get into the Neverland? It's all in this book. And the fun part of this book is that it's written by Dave Barry, who is a humor columnist. It's so funny. And in the paper. And uh, the other one is Ridley Pearson, who writes a lot of adult mysteries. And they've combined their talents. It's a real page turner. You can't put it down. What's going to happen next? And okay. it's, it's great. So quickly, just give us um, a couple of examples of other books that are coming out. Okay. Uh, this is Al Capone Does My Shirts. And uh, <laughs> this is a historical uh, fiction. That, uh, that takes place at Alcatraz, where the kid in this story actually has his laundry done by the notorious criminal Al Capone. And there's a great story in that. This has been very popular. And last but not least is Dragon Rider. And Dragon Rider is by Cornelia Funk. And uh, she also came out with uh, uh, Thief Lord and Inkheart, which have been tremendous books. And this is an exciting fantasy all about uh, a dragon and what happens when people come into his valley in his quest to find the home of the dragons. Those sounds very exciting. Oh, they're wonderful books. They're wonderful so, books. And like you said, they are books, but what are some other kinds of um, non-book reading material that we can read this summer? Well, I just happen to have with me, th these are magazines. And lots of people don't realize that at your public library, you can check out a magazine just like a book. For free. For, for, free, for free and for three weeks. That's excellent. That's right. So I just brought a few of those with me. I mean, there's, there's, there are things that girls might just want to read. There are things that, uh, like uh, apple seeds, that have, you know, just fun articles. You can put them on the easel okay. if you want. Okay, put them on the Showcase easel. Showcase them. These are really neat looking magazines. Oh, they're, they're gorgeous. See, and they haven't gone out yet. So that's apple seed. Here's New Moon, which is a book, which is a magazine for girls with writings that they might be interested in. Stone, Stone Soup. Soup, you might want to submit your own writings to Stone Soup. If you want to be a writer, they publish children's writings. Uh, if you want to get creative, there's Creative Kids and Muse and, of course, American Girl. Sports Illustrated for Kids, I didn't cool. get it before it got checked out. So those are some of the th other magazine things that you can check so out from the definitely library. Tons of ways to keep us busy during the summer with Absolutely. reading. Absolutely. Thank you so much. My I pleasure. Cannot, I can't wait to get started on my own summer reading. I yeah, hope to see you guys at the library, okay? Exactly. <laughs> In addition to the books Patty recommended, we have a young book reviewer with another summer read that you may enjoy. <laughs> Wow. Read it! Satchel Paige was an awesome baseball player. And the best way to learn about him is by reading Satchel Paige by Lisa Klein Ransom. When the book begins, black athletes couldn't play on the same teams with white. So Satchel became a star pitcher in the Negro League. After baseball was finally integrated, Satchel was the first black athlete to pitch in a major league World Series and he was the first African-American to be voted into Baseball Hall of Fame. Satchel Page overcame prejudice and was a terrific athlete at the same time. This book also has paintings by James E. Ransom. It's an excellent book about a true American hero. Read it! Okay, Ryan and Abby are with me, and now it's time to get a little wet. Well, not in here, but hopefully you'll get a little wet this summer by going to a pool, beach, or lake. But we want to make sure that you play it safe. And to help you do that is our next guest in the zone. Hi. Hello. Hello, hello. Come on in. How are you doing? Just fine. This is Therese Sugar, who is the Assistant Director of Aquatics at the SRSC. And we have some water safety equipment in front of us. And mm -hmm. I have to ask you, when are we supposed to wear these life jackets? Life jackets should always be worn when you're on a boat, even adults. So if you guys are out on the boat with your parents, your, everyone on the boat even those and those skiing, everyone must wear a boat, uh, life jacket at all times. Even though we may know how to swim? Even if you know how to swim because if you fall off the boat or the boat capsizes and you hit your head, you're, if, you can't, if you're not conscious, you're not going to be able to swim. So everyone always has to wear a life jacket. Alright, it's a deal. Do you have a question, Ryan? 
Um, what about noodles? Do they keep us safe? The noodles, they're, noodles. A, they're a great thing to have. They're a lot of fun, but they're not something you should depend on having to keep you safe. You should have a noodle when you're having fun, but you should also have your parent there or an adult that can swim with you. So they're great to have and have fun with, but don't rely on them to save yourself. Okay, good tip. Um, how should I save what, someone who has fallen into the water and can't swim? Good question. Oh. Well, what you should do is first, if you can yell for some help, yell for someone to get help. And then you can, um, if you're at a lake or something like that, you can extend, you know, if you can lay on your stomach and reach out to them, grab them like that. If you have a rope, toss them a rope. You can use a noodle. You can hold on to the noodle and give them and hold a noodle out and let them grab on and pull them in. But you do not want to jump in yourself and save them because even someone who's a trained, you know, lifeguard, if they're not ready for it, they may not be strong enough to pull the person back in. So you should always stay on the land and help them through that way. So even if you are a good swimmer, mm -hmm. you should not jump in and pull someone out. Yes. It'd be safer just to um, try to toss them, tie, toss them the life jacket or something else like that until someone who um, is older and someone who uh, could be a rescue person. Okay. What are some things I should look out for when swimming in a lake or pond versus a uh, swimming pool? Mm. Well, that's a good question. Yeah. Lakes and um, ponds are a lot different than swimming they pools. They are. In swimming pools, you can see the bottom. But lakes and ponds, you can't always see the bottom. So whenever you jump in, you always need to jump in with your feet first. That way, if you land on a rock, it's gonna, it might hurt, but it's going to be your foot, and that's not going to be as bad as hitting your face or your head. So you never want to dive in. Um, and then also something you can think about is wearing shoes and things like that when you're in a lake or a pond. Just uh, like there's water shoes you can mm -hmm. wear so you don't cut your feet up. Oh, good point. When should I get, when should I avoid getting in the water? Mm. Oh, well, when there's thunderstorms, that's a big one. If you ever hear thunder or, li or see lightning, you need to get the wa out of the water immediately. Um, and then wait 30 minutes afterwards till getting back in. Even if it may not be raining, right? Yes, even if it's not okay. raining, if you hear thunder, you need to get out of the water, okay? Because the storm can be coming. And another time you shouldn't be in the water is in the dark. Because if you're in the dark, um, you can't see the water as well. And even if they're a parent, they may not be able to see where you're at all times. So if the pool's not lit up and it's dark, do not get into the pool. Who needs to supervise kids when they're swimming? Parents, should, uh, parents or adults that can swim should be supervising the kids at all times. So when you guys are out swimming, make sure, you know, if you're in a backyard pool, that your parents are there watching you and they're watching you the whole time. They're not just saying, okay, I'm going to come check on you every now and then. Make sure they're out there with you. And then if you're swimming at um, a city pool and there's a lot of people around, mm -hmm. your parent needs to stay by you if you're not a very strong swimmer. And then, of course, when you're at a lake or a pond or, or in the ocean, Someone, someone who can swim well should always be there to supervise you. Okay, so no swimming alone. Yep, swim with a buddy. That's, that's, oh, okay, so you yeah. swimming with a buddy is important. Swimming with a buddy is important. So, like we said earlier, if someone, you know, you're in trouble in the water, the buddy can go get help. So you should always swim with someone as well. Okay, and I have some questions about being on a boat. Mm -hmm. Because you said we have to wear life jackets yes. or life preservers and vests like this. What other rules do we need to follow when we're boating? When you're boating, um, the people driving there, there's rules about the speed that they can go in certain parts of the lake or um, ocean, um, parts of where you can go skiing, um, and then the depths of the boat, and just things like that. And when you're on the boat, you shouldn't be um, jumping around and all like that, so you don't fall off. Okay, so what about standing when the boat's going? Um, if it's not going too fast, if it's like a pontoon boat mm -hmm. that's going nice and slow, that's okay to stand. But if it's on a speed boat, you should be sitting down. Okay. Yep. And what do you recommend as far as um, learning how to swim? Is that important? Learn yes, it's very important. I think everyone should learn how to swim. Even people that are, you know, like your parents age, if they can't swim, they should eventually try to learn how to swim. So it's better to learn right away when you're young um, to sign up for swim lesson programs. The American Red Cross offers swim lesson programs to a lot of different facilities around the area. Um, so it's a great way to learn um, how to swim. And I highly recommend it. The younger you can start, the better. Okay. Well, thank you very much. You guys, we're going to be safe this summer, right? Yep. Awesome. Thank you very much again. Thank you. Here's a look at another summer adventure that I tried, and I highly recommend that you do the same. All aboard! you got to try this. We are here at the Indiana Transportation Museum, and we are going to take a train ride, so come on aboard and join us. I am so excited because today is my first time ever riding a train. 
Have you guys ever ridden a train before? No, I haven't. No? Me neither. All right, well, the first thing you have to have when you ride a train is a ticket, and somebody will come around to collect those tickets. Hi. Here's your souvenir. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Today we're taking a train ride that's really short, but you can also take train rides that are, you know, hours long. You can even take train rides that are days long. Riding a train feels bumpy, and I like to see the scenery as I go by. I think other kids should take a train ride for the first time because they'll learn about trains and they'll get to feel how fast and bumpy they are. One thing you'll love about a train is that while it's moving, you can walk from one end of the train all the way to the other. But you have to be careful when you're crossing from car to car, because where the cars connect, there are spaces that move. So you have to step over it. What's really cool about a train is that you can get something to eat or to drink. Some trains have beds like this one where you can go to sleep. There you go. Thank you. So what did you guys think your first time on the train? It was great. Yeah? Kids should definitely try it. Yes, they should. Hi, my name is Maida and this is the Friday Zone Community Calendar. Imagine a whole neighborhood covered in chalk. Well, you can take part in the street painting fun this Saturday at the annual Irvington Neighborhood Chalk Art event in Indianapolis. The fun begins at 9.30. Many Native Americans used coup sticks to let others know how brave they were. Learn more about this piece of art this Saturday at the Native American Museum in Terre Haute. Even make your very own coup stick to take home. If you love to watch dance performances, check out the Rise and Shine Cloggers this Sunday at 3. Join them at the Boxkirk Chimley Theater in Bloomington for a great musical journey. For more information about these and other events, log on to our website at www.fridayzone.org. I wonder who sent me an email this week. Well, I guess I better check as we make this zone connection. This first email comes from Tang, who lives in Terre Haute. Dear Echo, did kids tease you about your name when you were little? My name is Tang, and sometimes kids make fun of it, but some of my friends think it's cool. Well, Tang, I think your name is really cool. And yes, kids did tease me about my name when I was growing up. It hurt my feelings at the time, but now I really appreciate my name because it's unique. This next email comes from Sarah, who lives in Belgium? Wait a minute, Belgium? That's a country in Europe. I didn't know kids could watch the Friday Zone over there. Hmm, she says, Hello Echo, I've been spending the year in Brussels, Belgium. I did the college challenge last year with you. I miss watching the Friday Zone because they don't have it here, but I am watching Dutch, French, and German kids programs here. Looking forward to seeing you again. Right back if you can. Wow, I remember Sarah. That's so great that she's thinking about us. Let's see if we can find a picture of her when she was on the show. That's her. When she returns, we'll have to have her on the show to talk about what television shows kids watch in Belgium. See, it doesn't matter where you are. You can always write to me, and I hope that you do. Now here's a look at how to contact me. You can send me mail by writing The Friday Zone at 1229 East 7th Street, Bloomington, Indiana 47405, or email me through www.fridayzone.org. This show has been about having summer fun. One thing to remember is that you can have fun all the while helping others. Now that's a rewarding way to spend your summer, as these next kids discovered. Take a look. Zoom into action! Whoa! Hi, I'm Jacob. I'm Michael. I'm Andrew. I'm Dennis. Run, 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 run. Let's, Let's play buddy ball! Buddy ball is where special education children get to come out and just play baseball. Woo! Run, get 
everybody on. Buddy Ball teams up with a buddy. Everybody gets to hit and everybody plays. Well, as a volunteer, I sort of help kids hit the ball, run the bases. I know some of the kids from school. Most of them are better than you think they are. They yeah. can hit and stuff pretty good. Baseball's baseball to me. I don't care who's playing it. Zoom into action. And join the Zoom team. It's wonderful to have people in the community who change our lives, and that includes our teachers. Even though we're talking about summer fun, we take time to appreciate our teachers. Here's a look at one of them, Gay Hudson, the Friday Zone Educator of the Year from Monroe County. This is our teacher, Miss Hudson, and she is the Educator of the Year. She won the award because she's usually there for people. Miss Hudson's very nice and encouraging, like she doesn't let us give up on ourselves. I teach music uh, because, of course, that's what I enjoy the most. I want every child to enjoy experiencing music. We get to dance and we get to sing and we get to do all this stuff. And we're not always just listening to her talk. Nice. Now can you play the counter melody? I think I really like seeing that moment when all of a sudden it comes together and you can just see it. It's such a wonderful thing. And so you're constantly looking for their aha moments, as I call them. And once that happens, then you know you've been successful as a teacher. This is our teacher, Miss Hudson, and she is the educator of the year. Yay! What will you do with all the free time you'll have to yourself this summer? Well, in addition to the activities we already showed you, there are plenty of other things that can keep you entertained and quite busy. My next guest has spent many summers working on really cool long-term summer projects, and they're here to inspire us by sharing their passion. This is Casey, who puts together model kits, and Lois, who makes quilts. So Casey, I'm going to start with you. How long have you been making model cars? Uh, probably about nine or ten years now. So how old were you when you first started? Probably about twelve, five. Wow, I mean, these look really complicated. You were five years old and you started doing these. Yeah. That's awesome. How did you get started? Um, I always liked cars, just, and it was something I could do, it's free time. Do you do them with any, like, friends or a member of your family? Uh, my mom. Really? Husband. My mom and dad helped me with them. Cool. So tell us a little bit about these cars that you brought with you today. Um, this one, uh, I had an affair, I think it was th two years ago. Mm -hmm. That was the one I used last year. Um, this one's just uh, one that hasn't been put together yet. Oh, so you haven't done this one yet? No. Do they actually come fully disassembled and you yeah. have to put them together piece by piece? Completely. Do you paint them? Yeah. Wow, that's really cool. How long does it take, like how long did it take you to make this one? Uh, well, these, I don't know, I usually put about a month into them. Really? Yeah. And if there's a kid out there who wanted to go buy one at a store, like how much would one of these cost? Uh, the model car itself, probably about fourteen, fifteen dollars. And then you have to buy the paint for it too. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So it seems like it really takes a lot of hard and detailed work. Yeah. It took you a month to put one together. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. What do you enjoy most about doing this? Um, I don't know. Probably see the finished product itself. I don't know. Yeah, the finished product is really impressive considering you start with a box full of parts. Yeah. And Lois, you make quilts. Yep. So how long have you been doing this? Well, I just started last August at a quilt camp and then I've been making them all year. So not even quite a year. Wow, and you've already made all these. Yep. That's awesome. How did you get started doing this? And you said you were at a camp? Mm-hmm. I went to a camp last summer and I just liked it so much that I decided to do it. So tell us a little bit about these that you brought. Well, this one was the one that I made at the summer camp and it's a sampler. These are called samplers? Yeah, ones with different blocks. And this is hand piece. This Does one, that mean you sewed it together by yeah. hand? Wow, so you don't even use a sewing machine. Cool. This one I made from my mom at Mother's Day. I noticed and on the back you wrote a message to her. Can we show it? Mm -hmm. That's kind of a neat gift. Do you and your mom do this together? No. It was just a present? Yep. So how long does it take you to make one of these? Like, let's say this big one here. How long did that take you? It 
took me a week, but that was because I was out of camp and I had my whole time to write it. So. Oh, so like, it might take a week to make one of these smaller ones when you don't have all of your time to devote to it. Mm -hmm. So what do you enjoy most about doing it? Well, I like seeing the finished product and reminding that myself that I made it and put my time into it. Yeah, that seems to be kind of the, you guys both like seeing the finished product and all this hard work finally pays off and then you have this cool thing to show off. So how much does it cost? Is it a relatively inexpensive hobby? Well, I guess so. You have to buy the fabrics. And right. And it looks yeah. like you can do all kinds of cool things, like this one. I don't know, do you come up with these designs on your own? Well, most of them you can just find in quilting books, and this is my favorite block. It's called the pin wheel, and I, I like that too. It's really, really nice. Do you hand sew these too? Well, these two I did half and half because I had to get them done. Oh, okay. Do you, do you use them in a show? or? No, they, these were both presents. Oh, okay, I see, I see. So, um, what if we have some kids out there going, oh, I'm really, I'd really love to make some model cars. What advice would you give them? Um, I don't know, a few. Just, you gotta have patience. It takes a long time. It's not something you just get done today, so. Yeah, I mean, you said it took you a month to put yeah. together a single one, so patience. Yeah. And uh, you think a love of cars is important? Uh, not necessarily. There's tons of different kinds of models, planes, whatever. I mean, there's tons of different stuff you can do. So. And what would you say to a kid that wants to quilt? Well, I'd say just go to somebody in the neighborhood or a relative that knows how to and ask them to teach you because people love teaching kids how to quilt because they don't want the art to die. Oh, that's a really, really cool reason. So you mentioned um, adults helping you out. That's probably pretty important when you're doing something complicated like this. Do you need a lot of adult help on yours, or did you start uh, out needing it? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. As I got older, I did more and more myself, and um, I, I don't. I do most of it myself now, like completely. But well, you guys are very talented. Thank you for sharing that with us. Thanks, for That's awesome. Coming up next is our spotlight show. Enjoy this great episode about a big red dog named Clifford. And after the show, I'll see you back here for more Friday Zone. The Friday Zone will be right back after this great show. And now, back to the Friday Zone. Welcome back into the zone. It's time to sign off for the day, but before I go, I want to thank all of my guests for helping me explore great ways to have fun this summer. Whether you're reading a book, splashing in a pool, or working on a great summer project, we hope that you remember to enjoy every day, even with the challenges that may come your way. I'll see you next time in the Friday Zone. Good job, Ryan. Thank you.